really it's been an amazing experience. I had a great mom pa. The pioneers did so much and they even when our feet hurt we they was, theirs were bleeding and they were walking in eighteen inches of snow and it was insane that what they did. They were really amazing people and I just kinda want to put that into perspective and really be grateful for what I have and I'm really glad that I came and had this experience. We felt that it's important to go on track because every time we go on a track, the lives of young men and young women and some of the adult leaders are, are changed. President Hinckley spoke of the Pioneer Trail, Martin's Cove, Six Crossing, Rocky Ridge as sacred ground. And he spoke of, of the hope that individuals would go there and remember the sacrifices and ask themselves why those people did what they did. It's a motivation to see what these people did as followers of Jesus Christ and what they were willing to do for their belief in the Savior and to go to where they could, where they could hear a prophet's voice. My young brothers and sisters, this is a glorious sight. I haven't seen such a handsome group of saints for, oh, upwards of 170 years. <laughs> now, your present course is to head west, westward to Zion, just as we did in our day. A lot of times the, the, the stories that they hear about in a church setting really can't help you understand what the pioneers may be experienced out on the trail. And so to have the youth go to those places like Rocky Ridge and realize how, how difficult of a climb that was back in the day in snow, uh, really, I think, gave an appreciation to those and to the commitment to faith that those pioneers brought when they were coming to Salt Lake. Okay, okay, Salt Lake Trekkers, I think we're ready to go. my first thought was heck no <laughs> I'm not going on a five-day trek uh, my previous experience of trek when I was younger was um, a little scary we were pretty much starved and I didn't want to go through that again but I just put my big girl pants on and said okay let's do it when we first got called to be Mon Pa I have to say I was both excited and super nervous about certain things like I have a hard time sometimes getting to know people or to feel that feeling with the kids and so I was a little nervous about how that would go if I was going to be able to show them the kind of love that I wanted to so I was a little nervous about that but it turned out really good. At the core and heart of a trek was our hope and our, our real desire that these young men and young women have the opportunity to feel the spirit and to recognize what it is. I've seen uh, lives changed every time that I've gone on trek and seen um, the changes that occur with, with individuals, both those that were there as adults and those that were there as youth. When we got out there, it was, hey, let's just see what we can do to, to help these individuals get that firm testimony rooted in the gospel, rooted in those things that are, are the foundational principles that they can rely on for the rest of their lives and to see lives change, to see miracles occur, to see bonds made, um, was really rewarding for me to be, be just some small part of that.
I really liked the first devotional we had because the scripture kind of like talked about what we were like doing on Trek. It was talking about how like the pioneers had a hard time. That's kind of like what we were doing. We were like seeing what they were going through. I liked the Independence Rock experience, but the only part I didn't like is hiking up there because I had a skirt on and it was like super windy and it was blowing everywhere. I thought the Independence Rock was amazing. I don't think it's a coincidence Independence Rock was there. I think that God made it possible so that there was such a big place that people would know and it would direct them in the way that they were to go. And just climbing up there and being able to look around the valley and Devil's Gate and see Devil's Gate was surreal. Hey, did anyone sleep in the car on the way here? I did. It was great, but it was just really hard to drive at the same time. <laughs> On top, I just, I really loved the devotional about keeping ourselves clean and uh, restoring ourselves. And that was just really, really um, an awesome experience for me. Being on top of Independence Rock was the first opportunity we had to really have a perspective of the area we'd be in and to have an understanding of some of the natural um, environment that the pioneers encountered. It's still today pretty rugged, pretty isolated, and you kind of can sense the feeling that they must have had as they encountered some landmarks along the way, the rivers, the open prairies. Um, it just helped me to feel connected to what they may have been experiencing. Those youth were realizing, hey, this is going to be uh, not an easy task, but well worth it. And when we got up on top of that rock, I knew what the, the next few days held. And having the youth being able to see in the distance, just kind of setting that tone for the next few days, I was getting excited about what was coming. It has the potential to be something that's kind of a dreary, tedious, difficult thing, and all you can wait for is to get home and go to a 7-Eleven. That's not the way these young men and young women endured this. And there was a lot of laughing. They were helping each other. There was a great spirit and a great feeling that we're all brothers and sisters. They were doing something really hard. It was hot, it was windy, like it always is in Wyoming. We heard very little complaining. It's been really fun in a pioneer family. We are all like, Having fun with each other, being nice to each other. Well, I think it's fun. It's just like camping, but it's more walking. The friendship um, and the people that are here is just, it feels like being a big family. Everybody's just helping each other and being nice to each other, just like a big family. We had the beehives and deacons. They were more on our maturity level, so we were goofing off and playing a There lot. might have been some pranks that went down on this trek. We arrived uh, at Martin's Cove, and we were immediately taken with our families to, uh, to the hand cart. After that, we were taken to see a film. It was, it was really moving because we had this gathering. I remember us uh, singing and just really getting in the spirit of, of, of going out to uh, that. Like right off the bat, they just really got along with one another and had a great time. Um, pushing or pulling the handcart, and they loved one another without having known one another. And just the entire time, we, we could not have been more impressed with how they handled any of the circumstances that, were, that they were put in during Trek. I'm the type of guy that there's a time and a place for everything. So there's a time and a place to run through the puddles and have fun and hoot and holler. There's also a time and a place to be mindful and respectful and spiritual of, of what occurred. And, and that's really what I wanted to bring to our family, that they got to experience both of those things at the right time and place. I did a lot of reading about some of our pioneer ancestors, and, and they were tough. I mean, they, they had true testimonies to endure what they endured and to take on those hardships. I had a pioneer ancestor who was 13 my age when he crossed the plains. And he was in charge of a wagon company. 
and he traveled 104 days on the plains. And he said that by the time he got to the Salt Lake Valley, even though he was my age, he was accepted as a man. That's kind of what I want to do. I knew the pioneers had a rough time. Then I realized that it was like way rougher than I actually thought it would be. I believe that the Trek experience is having the opportunity to connect with the past and be introspective about the present. So both physically and spiritually, Trek offers an opportunity to learn about our spiritual heritage and to have physical experiences that push us and take us out of our comfort zone and help us connect with a higher power. Our prayer was just that the kids would have some kind of an understanding and that they would feel the spirit and knowing what was sacrificed for them how much they really went through and how much they sacrificed for us. And for them to have a little taste of what they went through was what we prayed so hard for, that they would understand just a glimpse of what the pioneers had to go through. I don't think anybody else from my family knew each other. And it was really great to see, you know, like the parents cheering for the kids and the kids kind of forming, forming that relationship with the parents. So it was really great. The moms and paws are right at the core of, of any trek. They not only go out and pull the hand carts and sweat and struggle and physically exert themselves, but also help the young men and young women have that spiritual experience that we hope that they'll have on, on the trek. I love my family so much. I love my mom and pa. Um, they were just like, it was almost like they were perfectly fit for me. Um, they're just super nice, like super easy going to like, I feel like I could just talk to them about anything. Yeah, my parent near family is amazing. So cool. I like it. I love it. My family here. <laughs> the most important thing for me was that the kids in my family had every opportunity to fill the spirit, to feel the love that we had for them and to feel like they accomplished something special. I get when I walk around this location is a feeling of peace and calm, um, feeling the, the love that those saints had for the gospel. We have seen so many people's lives touched since they've been here. We have seen, actually seen kids go out that did not want to come out on this trek. They were, they were forced to come out by their families and when they left their countenances were different and they were different. I think what they learn the most here, the trekkers that come, I think is when they get to the top of the cove and they just sit down for a minute and look back down over where those people stayed and think about what they went through and what's going on in their lives. And sometimes they're brought to tears 
And it's not just the girls and the women, sometimes it's the men and the boys that feel that spirit and are shedding those tears too. Uh, at first when the state presidency asked us to do a devotional, I thought, this is, this is pretty easy. And then when I learned it was gonna be the first devotional, um, I became a little more concerned about making certain we, we tried to set the right stage uh, for Trek. Um, ultimately, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that we had that opportunity, uh, but I think that, that sharing the words that we did and some of the stories that we did, and then to peacefully and quietly watch um, the, the kids cross that river um, was extremely moving and touching to think about the snow and the ice and, and the young men that did what they did there. Before the crossing was completed, the shadows of the evening were closing around us, and as most people know, that can be the coldest hour of 24 hours. Women shrank back, men began to weep. Some pushed through, but others were unequal to the ordeal. Three 18-year-old boys belonging to the relief party came to the rescue, and to the astonishment of all who saw, carried nearly every member of that ill-fated handcart company across the snowbound stream. Crossing the Sweetwater right before we went up into Martin's Cove was real special because we were all quiet. We really thought about what happened there. Crossing the Sweetwater River, I thought it was a little chilly, but we, it was like middle of July when we did it, and they did it when snow was pounding down and it was all icy. and. The, and the fact that we thought that that was cold makes me wonder how cold and difficult it was to cross that river in the winter. It was so serene and quiet and peaceful and they were all, I think, introspective, kind of thinking about what the pioneers had been through and being able to experience it themselves a little bit and then it seemed like the perfect beginning for that day and what was to follow because it kind of got them in that right frame of mind and that spirit for when we went up into the coves. It really was the young people in many, many ways who saved the older saints who were suffering the most. It was the young people who gathered the firewood, who helped set up the tents, who helped cross the river, and made it possible for those rescuers to get those people into Zion. I wanted to go to Zion and dwell with the saints in peace. I am a widow. I have no husband to lean on in my journey. But Samuel, my son, is strong, and Rebecca and Sarah will help me. We are too poor for wagons and oxen. We can walk. We will pull a handcart to Zion. We have started, it seems, too late in the season. Our faith gives us courage. We cannot tarry. On to Zion, we cry. Martin's Cove was just very spiritual for me. I felt like I could actually feel the souls of the people, you know, like they were guiding us and helping us feel the spirit and like, guiding us through this wonderful adventure. Martin's Cove is just very special for me because of my ancestors who were in the Martin Company at that time. And the stake presidency asked us to do the devotional before we walked up into the cove. and. 
and it was just uh, it was just a special experience, uh, just an amazing experience to be there in Martin's Cove. I remember writing in my journal and recording spiritual things and insights I was having and watching our kids having similar experiences, watching them interact with each other in a very quiet, thoughtful way. It was, it was touching. It was really nice how silent we were during Martin's Cove because it gave us a lot of time to think and um, to really experience what what was happening and to learn about all of all of the hardships that people face before going up uh, to Martin's Cove. They, they experienced some harsh conditions. They experienced, um, they lost a lot of loved ones, a lot of family members. They're buried throughout and to, to go up and, and learn of their commitment to the gospel, I think is really what would, could be passed down for generations. And I think that was just part of their legacy is to leave that for those, those youth that came behind. And so I wanted our youth to go connect and, and feel what these guys had, had left for them. One of the unique aspects of going on trek is that it's hard especially the one we did where we went longer stretches each day. There are times when you're tired, it's hot, you're discouraged, and I hope that they all had the experience of having someone lift them up. Um, after watching all the other kids help each other and everyone just joins in and it makes things not only easier for others but easier for yourself and so that when you go back home you'll be able to do the same thing. You don't have to be a pioneer trekking in the Wyoming countryside in the winter time to be able to use your use your knowledge and use your abilities as meager as it may be to, to help other people. Rescuing was spiritual. It was creating a loving space for kids. They were so kind to one another and there was a lot of fun and love in our family. And so it was more of emotional spiritual rescue as some of them would get blisters or have a harder time pushing or would just feel tired, to be able to say, hey, go, go step up, go rescue, go help, uh, push a little harder, pull a little harder. And I hope they learned that one, it's, it's okay to be rescued. And more importantly, we need to be looking for people around us who need to be rescued. I think the message was really great to help people get in that state of mind that there's others that need help and that you can be the one to help them. They were here because they had found something that's called the pure love of Christ. And you will find that when you're having a bad day or you'll find that when you're struggling, if you try to forget your own needs and you try to help somebody, you look around, you find somebody that needs something, you might start feeling some joy and some happiness that you've never known before. We had a very dark storm descend on us, brought in a, a, a lot of water, and really we were in a desperate situation because many of our tents and sleeping bags and uh, even some clothing um, needed, we needed to get some new, new stuff. We started off where we saw the cloud in the distance and we saw some lightning and then we're like, we thought it was blowing a different direction. And then it blew towards us and we're like feeling droplets every day and then it was like drop, 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 hitting us a little. And then it started raining and then it turned to hail. Like the hail was pretty hard, but I mean, it was really fun because it was like the actual pioneers. I like the rainstorm because we all went into our leader's car and played a game of Mafia, and I won. And luckily we had some rescuers nearby that were able to bring in some supplies, and we were able to get those to us, and we were able to weather that storm uh, and, and continue on the trek, which speaks to, I think, the grit and determination that we have, and also the opportunity for us to be rescued by some of those coming in with those, those supplies.
So we were supposed to go on a trek. We weren't able to, but I had a dream that was very powerful and that led me to understand that we needed to go and make it happen. The youth that were in our group, they were all from such diverse backgrounds and it was such a beautiful thing to be able to connect to them. And not only did they help us to have a positive experience, but it was incredible to see how our different personalities helped them. And she thought to herself, do I have enough faith to go all the way to Zion, carrying my sister in a handcart? And she did. She walked a thousand miles and never even stepped once into a handcart. So I look at that and I think, what an amazing young woman, how brave. Without faith, like, we couldn't even do anything because, like, just like the pioneers, all they had was just, like, to have faith in our Heavenly Father. And so I feel like that's, like, a really big thing. I think it was being in the same place as them. I think it really gave me a new appreciation for, like, their hardships and not just imagining it in pictures. I think actually going through it gives you, like, an experience. And I think experiences are more than like pictures and words. Those stories, you know, they have they have the spirit with them, and it's crazy that someone can go through that much, even though, you know, it's something. It's faith. You, it's not something seen. It's something that you you believe in with all your heart and stuff. So I think I'll always try to hold on to that. We heard some stories about many of the pioneers. They had run out of food and they were down to eating any leather or anything they could find. And so we passed out little pieces of leather for them to chew on and, and see how, how filling or satisfying that might be, which of course it wasn't. Just to maybe again experience some of the challenges that may have existed those pioneers before as they were trying to make their way here. And many of the youth ate. Some asked for a second piece, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of fun for them to maybe make that connection with their, their pioneers. While they were sitting here, not knowing, they pulled together and they sang how firm the foundation. Instead of being bitter, instead of being angry with God, they pulled together and sang how firm a foundation with implicit faith in the Lord that they would be cared for. At some point in our lives, we will all need to be rescued and we'll also need to be doing the rescuing. And I think we saw that multiple times throughout Trek, um, the giving and the taking of being and being rescued and feeling like you had to go rescue someone. So it was a great theme, I believe, for the, for the Trek experience. I was grateful for that small glimpse of being really tired and really hungry in the heat and for the kids to experience that because it was such a small, small glimpse of what they actually suffered through day in and day out. Rescuing was certainly one of the themes of Trek that you could see existing throughout just about all of the activities that, that were on Trek. The, the plan was that we would sit down and, and eat lunch, but of course we didn't have our lunch and that was by design. And so that we were rescued by one guy pulling that hand cart with all of the food in it. Not us ourselves being rescued, but also us rescuing others.
Probably one of the most difficult parts of trek is, is Rocky Ridge. And so we wanted that to be a special experience, to, to learn about the pioneers and their situation and the challenges that were upon them at that time. To go up and over certainly, I think, breathe uh, a lot of life into these trekkers and in life in general, they know that they can overcome very difficult things like Rocky Ridge. So the night before the women's poll, I was really sick from just being pregnant and I didn't think I'd be able to walk at all that day. And we gave our devotional that morning and then we got to that rocky ridge that was steep and very hard to pull handcarts on because of all the rocks. And I thought of those that went before me and thought of our kids and our family and thought, let's do this was hard for us and we were healthy and strong and we had slept before and it wasn't snowing um, but to imagine that like with the snow and being almost frozen to death it makes it seem impossible. One of the most amazing experiences that occurred on Rocky Ridge was the Jens and Elsie Nelson reenactment where Elsie Nelson pulled her husband in the handcart for a little while. We, we reenacted that with the Maz trying to pull the paws up a, a little section there. It was a really emotional experience for everyone watching, I think, especially because of the knowledge that so many people did things that seemed impossible. And they did it because they had to. I started to run down the hill. I just saw like all my Trek siblings behind me and beside me and it was it was just awesome because I just felt so much love within this Trek family that I had just barely met and they were just running down there to help our mom that isn't like our real mom but we just loved her so much and we wanted to help her because we knew that she was struggling. To feel them come and rescue me. That was amazing to have their help and to see their strength and that they buoyed me up and helped me. I don't know how, how many dry eyes there were, but there weren't that many dry eyes in the whole group. But um, when they ran down and, and helped their moths out, um, it was truly amazing. I think it's one of like a lifetime experience because not everyone can come here and experience the feelings that we have felt. Yeah, it made me think about how strong their faith must have been to go and do this like every day in the bitter cold while they were starving um, so that they could hear a prophet's voice. There are some people that just sat down like, I'm done, and then there are others that just kept going and they had to pull their family in handcarts. And we had help, but imagine, I can't imagine doing that in like cold weather and like having like three kids in the car. They came because the prophet was up there and because they knew that if they wanted to live the gospel, they needed to be where the prophet was. Brigham Young was great. I think there were times that he really provided some real inspiration for those young men and young women. And it was just awesome to have them out there. I hope that our kids know how much we love them and hope for the best. They're not our, our real children, but we love them so much and we hope that they have happy and fulfilled lives. And this hope we're hoping was a good foundation for them.
but they took away how loved they truly are. Not only by us, but by their Heavenly Father. And that they can do hard things and that life is not easy, but that they can do hard things and if they ask for help, that they'll get it. that they had a strengthening of their testimony and of their Savior. That those sacrifices that they witnessed or heard about, they can also be like that and have that strength and be strong in the ways that they're asked to be strong in their lives. The testimony meeting at the conclusion of, of any trek will tell you a lot about what's happened, a lot about what these young men and young women have experienced. And one of our main goals, in fact, I think our focus on this trek, if these young men and young women experienced nothing else, we wanted them to be able to stand and bear their testimony that they had felt the Spirit of the Lord, that somewhere along that experience, the Holy Ghost had touched their hearts. Before Trek, I wasn't really connected with the Spirit. I've had a hard time trying to connect. And being here has really helped me to open up and meet people who are more connected to the Spirit and help me to accept Him and accept uh, the Church into my life. I didn't even like really want to go when I first got here. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to, you know, go and take time out of my life or whatever. But uh, once I once I got here, and you know, once I met the people in my family, um, you know, that changed. And thanks to everybody that was friendly to me. I'd also like to thank my mom and pop because everybody just made it a really fun experience. I I just couldn't really prepare myself for how much I'd enjoy this. And. Um, I had a great time uh, I mean, this past week, and I really felt the spirit strong. I actually met new people too. They are, in, they are great people. I've just met some of the most wonderful people, and this experience has just been so much better for me. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The interesting thing about track and camp is just the simplicity of life. and. Everything just boils down and it's e just much easier to see like why we're here and what we're supposed to be doing. And we're not so caught up in, you know, life. I had this impression while we were in Martin's Cove that every single spirit that had been in those handcart companies was there with us at that moment. I don't know why. I guess the first thing I want to say is obviously my family, I started to think I like them more than my own family. But passing por todas essas coisas que eu estou passando aqui com a minha família e com meus amigos, eu meu testemunho só aumenta cada dia e eu sei que realmente essa igreja é verdadeira. Um, but going through everything that I have been through this week with you, with my friends and my family, just um, strength my testimony that the church is true. Everybody that was on this track really helped me, even when I really just wanted to sit down and just leave <laughs> or just not push anything and just go, go home. But everybody that came, they were pushing me along, and it really helped me a lot. I'm so thankful to be here, and I can't believe it's already over. It felt really fast. I thought it was going to be longer because it was longer, <laughs> but it wasn't. Um, and uh, I just had such a great time. You guys are all awesome. My testimony has been getting stronger by little by little, and I'm really grateful for that. And I'd like to thank my Trek family for that, for helping me strengthen. 
so thanks guys i watched my mom struggle and i thought i don't know how she did it i really don't and um i thought sometimes we we need to get rescued in life Trek is a lot of work. Uh, to look at um, the amount of effort that goes into pulling off Trek, it, it's it's staggering. It's it's amazing to watch the the amount of people that come in to to pull this off. But in the end, if you can touch uh, one individual's life, it's worth it. It's worth all of that effort. And interestingly, I don't think we just touched one person's life. I think we touched many lives when we were out there. We can count on coming home and having at least one or two or three young men or young women having a life-changing experience and making decisions that will change the course of their life.